Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who while the Blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth, grant us, we pray, that faithful to the promptings of the Spirit, we may magnify your greatness with the Virgin Mary at all times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing, sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The king of Israel the Lord is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you, as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Yes. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. God indeed is my savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. With joy, you will draw water at the fountain of salvation. Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim his name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Among you is the great and holy one of Israel. Please stand. Virgin Mary, who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Most blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. The Gospel tells us, Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Today is the feast of the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Popularly, May 31 is more known for Santa Cruz San and Flores de Mayo. But in the liturgy of the church, today celebrates that event in the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary, which we remember every time we pray the second mystery of the joyful mystery. Today's gospel reading tells us that Mary traveled in haste. Nagmadali si Maria. The distance from Nazareth to the country of Judah is around 145 kilometers. If you take it by foot, that would, the travel would be around a week kung madasig-dasig ka. And to top, to top it all, Mary was pregnant. But just the same, the gospel tells us Mary traveled in haste. She did not make any excuses. She did not make her pregnancy a reason why she should not go to Judah. She traveled immediately when she received the message from the angel Gabriel that Elizabeth, her cousin, was six months pregnant. In other words, it was not just any random visit. Mary did not visit her cousin like a guest who was on vacation. It was not a holiday visit at all. Rather, Mary set out on a journey of love to give support to her older cousin. Mary traveled in haste in order to assist her pregnant cousin. So in a manner of speaking, Mary was with her cousin. She was present in her time of need. Mary's presence was her present to Elizabeth. Her presence was her gift. And this is the first lesson that we can, today, we can learn from today's feast. The gift of presence. Because presence is a valuable gift. When we meet each other, are we really present to one another? An observation has been made 
we usually say, ordinarily say, good morning, how are you? But really they say, we are not present when we say that. It's just an expression to start a conversation. Presence, it is a valuable gift. We are asked, therefore, to be like Mary, to be totally present when we visit the other. Second, Mary herself was pregnant when she visited Elizabeth. Mary brought Jesus the Lord whom she was carrying in her womb. In other words, Mary's presence was not her only present when she visited her cousin. Mary graced Elizabeth by bringing with her the greatest present, the greatest gift, and that is the presence of Jesus. Yes, Elizabeth was graced by the presence of Mary, but she was also graced by the presence of Jesus. And as a result of Mary's visit, we are told that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Perhaps it is also good to ask ourselves when we visit the other, when we take time to be present to the other, does, is the, does the occasion bring out an inspiration from God? Or do we, come, do we become more discouraged after the visit? When we visit each other, instead of inspiring each other, we make each other more depressed. Why? By sharing our problems. When we are present, are we able to inspire the other, especially if the other is having a difficult time? Are we sensitive that our presence should give life to the other. Today's feast is a reminder that a visit, especially to someone who is in need, can be a source of grace and blessing. And the blessing is returned. If you look at the episode in today's gospel, Mary did not only give to Elizabeth, she also received from Elizabeth. She herself was blessed by Elizabeth when she said, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is she who believed. Because when we visit someone, we do not only grace them with our presence, we are also graced by their presence. We do not only bless them, we are also blessed by them. And we discover that in giving, we receive more than we give. My dear friends, when two people of faith meet, there is always a third person present, and that is the Lord. Both Mary and Elizabeth show themselves to be very aware of the Lord's presence. Elizabeth recognizes Mary as the mother of the Lord. Mary, for her part, proclaims the greatness of the Lord in response to Elizabeth's blessing of her. We can to learn from today's feast. We can learn from Mary and Elizabeth to be attentive to that hidden dimension of our meetings and encounters, and that is the presence of the Lord. The meeting between Mary and Elizabeth shows us what is best in any human encounter, a moment of mutual giving and receiving in a spirit of attentiveness to the Lord's presence. So today, as we honor our Blessed Virgin Mary, as we remember the visitation of Mary to her cousin, we pray that like Mary, our presence can also be a source of life to others. Like Mary, our presence can be a source of blessing for others. Like Mary, let us bring Jesus to each other. Always Jesus, only Jesus. Amen. We stand for the prayers of the faithful. Let us magnify the Lord with the Virgin Mary, who at the message of the angel visits her cousin Elizabeth and brings the joy of the Savior even while in her womb. And for every petition, let our response be, Lord, visit us in peace. Lord, visit us in peace. May we enter 
into the great stream of joy that the just ones in the scriptures felt when the Lord visited his people, we pray. Lord, visit us in peace. May we feel the joy of Easter even in moments of difficulty and distress, in the conviction that we are infinitely loved by the Lord, we pray. Lord, visit us in peace. Like the Blessed Virgin Mary, may we visit and bring joy and gladness to our neighbors, especially to the sick, the elderly, and the forgotten ones, we pray. Lord, visit us in peace. May our gratitude to God expand our hearts and open them to our neighbor who is not an adversary but a beloved brother and sister, we pray. Lord, Lord visit us in peace. May we entrust ourselves to Mary, the mother of our Lord, and with her sing of the great things done by God, we pray. Lord, Lord visit, visit us in peace. We bow our heads and in silence pray for the intentions of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, Jesus. Loving God, Mary, our Lady of Help, sets out from her town to be of service to others. May she inspire us to follow the movements of your Spirit in our daily lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for, for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. May our offering of this saving sacrifice be acceptable to your majesty, O Lord, as you are pleased to accept the charity of the most blessed mother of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in exaltation of all the saints. 
and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly even towards sense you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with yours. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Sins of the world have mercy. 
behold Jesus, the son of Mary. Behold him, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. But only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. May your church proclaim your greatness, O God, for you have done great things for your faithful. And as St. John the Baptist leapt with joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of Christ, so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Let us honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Salve Regina, The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ.